in the first of the previous two screencasts on scaling, we learned about relative strengths of creatures when scaled up in size. As a concept review check, I ask some questions. If an ant is scaled up in size, keeping its same proportions, would it be stronger than before? That is, would its legs be stronger? Did you answer yes? That's correct, for both the cross-section of its legs and its strength would be greater. Okay on that? Now a different question. Would it be stronger compared with its increase in body weight? I hope you said no. Put it this way. If an ant were scaled up tenfold, the cross-section of its legs would be a hundred times greater and stronger, but they would support 1,000 times as much weight. Recall that weight goes up as the cube, whereas cross-section and strength goes up as the square of the increase. Such a giant ant couldn't stand up. Also, it wouldn't be able to breathe, but that's another story. So a scaled-up ant would be weaker compared to its increased body weight. So the great strengths attributed to fictional Hollywood giants cannot be taken seriously. In the second screencast on scaling, we learned that cubical blocks scaled up in size have smaller proportions of surface areas compared with their volumes. Again, volume increases at the cube, area is the square. So when scaled up, the ratio of surface area to volume, or surface area to weight, decreases. Recall that the one cubic centimeter block had a surface to volume ratio of six, which for the two cubic centimeter block reduced to three, and for the three cubic centimeter block went down to two. Surface to volume ratios decrease for scale-ups. Let's do a concepts check on this. We know the process of scaling holds for all shapes that retain their proportions when scaled up. So what's true for boxes is true for spheres. Here's a sphere, the orange ball. It has a certain surface area. Let's call it A. Here's a second sphere with twice the radius. How much more surface area does it have? Did you say twice? No, no, no. Area depends on the square of the radius. Twice the radius means four times the area. So we write 4a. How about this sphere of three times the radius? How much more surface area does it have compared with a smaller sphere? Did you say nine times? I hope so. So we write 9a. And as a check to our first lesson on scaling, if the small sphere has mass m, what's the masses of the other two? Did you say 8m and 27m? Ah, if so, you're humming. Since we're talking about spheres, here's something intriguing. We know if we slice a sphere, say an orange, through its center, the cross-section will be a circle. We know the formula for the area of a circle, right? It's pi r square. I emphasize the circular area here with a red crosshatch. Do you know the formula for the area of a sphere? It's easy to remember. It's the area of four circles, four pi r square. In my sign painting days, I sometimes applied gold leaf to particular signs. A certain amount would be needed to cover a circle. And how much gold leaf to cover a sphere of the same radius? That's right, four times as much. The area of a sphere is the area of four circles of the same radius. Yum geometry. We find that big creatures have less skin per body weight than smaller creatures. And we remember that the small amount of skin for an elephant, compared to its body weight, is compensated by its large ears, which increase its overall radiating area, which enables cooling in hot climates. Small things have proportionally more surface area than bigger things. Small branches and twigs on a tree, for example, have a combined surface area that is enormous compared with the bark surrounding the trunk of the tree. Here's my nephew John Suhaki, my chemistry co-author at a campfire. He knows that the burning of wood is an interaction between oxygen molecules in the air and molecules on the surface of the wood. To start a fire, he lights twigs with a lot of surface rather than the larger pieces of wood. 
After the fire is going, John adds large pieces of wood with less surface area per volume that burn more slowly. Time for a fax check. Which burns more slowly, big chunks of coal or small chunks of coal? Did you say big chunks burn more slowly? I hope so. But this is similar to the slow burning pieces of wood in John's campfire. Interestingly enough, coal dust explodes when ignited. With all that surface area, any flammable dust is explosive, particularly grain dust in agricultural storage areas. Watch out for the small things. The greater surface area per weight or volume for small things has its advantages. Consider falling. If you fall from the top of a tree, you're in trouble. But how about insects or even a mouse? Their proportionally large surface areas allow them to fall long distances without harm. Really small creatures need no parachutes. And that's nice. Not so nice is the fate of large creatures when they fall. This falling cat's relatively large weight compared with its surface area finds it in trouble until it hits the safety net below. And falling Nellie is smiling, but only because she has a parachute. A parachute greatly increases surface area, more specifically, frontal surface area, the part that encounters air resistance. For equal sized parachutes, the heavier person will fall faster. A flying squirrel, in effect, has its own parachute. Wingsuit flyers emulate the flying squirrel by increased frontal area via webs between the arms and legs. Because wingsuit flyers are so much heavier than flying squirrels, they soar at much greater speeds. It's standard practice that wingsuit flyers use a parachute to further increase frontal surface area when landing. Doesn't this look like fun? If wingsuit flying was around when I was a teen, I think it have chosen wingsuit flying over boxing. I find it intriguing that humans got to the moon long before they discovered parasailing and more recently wingsuit flying. Progression often challenges good sense. So we learn that smaller creatures with their larger ratios of surface area to weight do better than larger creatures when falling. Here's a gorilla who inadvertently runs off the edge of a cliff. Yuck, not a good landing. Here's a mouse that runs off the same cliff. Yum, a much better landing. A greater surface area to weight ratio favors small creatures when they fall. The physics and geometry of scaling is a central fact of life to all of nature's creatures. And which science is at the root of nature's rules? That's right, physics. I want to leave you with a question. How does surface area per body weight, along with air resistance, justify this statement? The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.